King Spawn issue number 10 from Image Comics. So yeah, uh, when they announced the Spawn universe, I was really excited because I'm someone who like, I was always interested in picking up Spawn, but the fact that there's like over 300 issues, it seemed a little bit daunting for me to just try to jump in. It's like, is there any specific spot I can jump in? Do I have to read from issue number one? So when the Spawn universe was announced, I thought, okay, cool. Like we're going to have separate series of separate spawn characters we're gonna have the scorched which is like a spawn team up we're gonna have gunslinger spawn we're gonna have king spawn yeah we have different spawns and we can just pick which one we want and follow that but instead they made the mistake of having every spawn connected together so you have to read everything if you want to figure out what's going on in king spawn you can't just read king spawn you have to read king spawn you have to read gunslinger spawn you have to read the scorched and you have to read regular spawn same for Gunslinger. You have to read uh, everything else. Um, I, I've tried just reading Gunslinger Spawn and uh, The Scorched, and I had no idea what the hell is going on because it, it, it feels like the story is jumping all over the place, and that's because you have to read everything Spawn-related. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a shame. Another thing that I don't care for about this specific issue is, as you can see on the top of this cover, black, white, and red all over. They are trying to cash in on the whole uh, minimalistic coloring fad that seems to be going on nowadays. I have no idea why, but we, we've had a lot of uh, series pick that up. We had uh, Superman do it. I believe Batman did it. Wonder Woman did it. Red Sonia did it. The thing about them, though, is that for their minimalist coloring black and white issues is that it wasn't part of any main run or main story. It was its own separate thing, and it was mostly just anthologies by different artists and different writers, and it had nothing whatsoever to do with a, a main run. So it works in that regard. Here, I feel like it doesn't, because here we're going to get black and white interior with uh, red uh, coloring. It's just black, white, and red. And, I mean, this, this is Spawn. This is a Spawn issue. And the thing about Spawn is... Regardless of how you feel about the character or the storyline or anything like that, the interior artwork for Spawn has always been freaking amazing. And here, the the artwork is good. It's just you can't really appreciate it all that much because of the, the black and white. And it's also, I don't know, it just it doesn't work here. There have been comics that work great with the black and white and minimalist coloring. Uh, Stake from Scout Comics, for example, did this, and I thought it did it very, very well. Uh, you can check out those reviews. I have those um, on this channel. And that series used black and white, and then it will have minimalist coloring for specific parts, like maybe a character's eyes, maybe it was blood, maybe it was a character's emotions. Like It, it used it for very specific thing. Here, it doesn't really feel like it, it's doing that all that much. Like It's mostly just black and white. The red is mostly just for the, the narrative boxes. We'll get a little bit splashes of red, but that's usually for blood and just a little bit to show anger. But I feel like it if you're going to use minimalist coloring for only specific moments, you should use it to, to kind of emphasize like a, a certain emotion or just something that you're trying to, to tell us. Like I said, Steak did it beautifully. Um, when a character is blushing, it would be black and white, and then you'll have a little bit of, of the redness on her cheeks. Um, to show depression, you'll have a little bit of the, like the blue tint. Um, if something is important, you'll use a little bit of coloring to make it pop out. Like the coloring there was done marvelously. Here, it feels more like it's just a gimmick. It feels like they're just trying to cash in on this fad. And uh, yeah, another thing I didn't care for this issue is that it's a very Terry heavy issue. And it could just be me, but I was never a fan of the Terry character. Again, I'm someone, I'm not a spawn fanatic i've read different things of spawn I, i've seen the tv series i've seen the movies i've played all the video games and i've read issues here and there and i've seen uh youtube videos of like certain arcs and stuff like that so i i have some knowledge of the character but i am in no way um a specialist when it comes to spawn but i do know like i know who terry is terry was spawn's best friend uh, and when Spawn died, he comforted Spawn's wife, Wanda, ends up marrying her and having uh, a child with her, which is kind of a dick move to move in on your, your bro's wife. But yeah, 
Terry is the main focus of this issue. And again, like I don't I don't really care for Terry, but basically the story is that there's like a group, basically all the demons, the angels and stuff, they're banding together. All Spawn's old enemies are coming back. There are these things called the dead zones. And so um, all the different factions are trying to convince Spawn to take up this throne and become king so that he can open up the, um, I guess, the afterlife for the people to, to go to. Uh, I'm a little bit confused because, again, I, I'm not reading everything. I'm mostly just reading King Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, and The Scorched. I'm not reading the main Spawn issue issues, so um, I'm probably missing some things here. But, uh, yeah, basically they want Spawn to become king, Al Simmons to become king. And uh, one of the things that they're trying to convince him is that if he takes the throne he'll be able to bring back Wanda. Like, Wanda is not dead, in a sense, or like she she's dead, but she's not in um, a dead zone, or she's not in hell, or wherever. She, she's she's able to come back. Spawn can bring her back. Like, that's what they're kind of, that's the carrot that they're dangling in front of Spawn. If you take the throne, you'll be able to bring your wife back, and you can be with her. Terry, however, is under the belief that uh, leave the dead in peace like don't don't bring her back like she had her life let her die and so terry wants to get more information on this uh so he he knows there's this building called exodus and they're the ones that uh like they're the people that gave information to spawn about wanda so he thinks okay maybe if i go there i can find more information about wanda i can find out if they're lying or not i can find out how exactly they can bring her back and stuff um and maybe how to prevent that from happening so he knocks out a janitor, um, takes on the disguise, and then he sneaks into the building. He overhears some demons talking about how um, their plan is working so far. Uh, they're, they, they basically told Spawn to go after Azrael. And um, meanwhile, while they're doing that, these demons are using their tel uh, teleportation powers to bring back people like Kincaid and Wayne from the dead zones. Their boss is someone called the Shadow Man. So, uh, yeah, Terry's listening in on all this, and then eventually he decides to, to fight them. And so he, he attacks them, and that's where we have some of the, the red splashes where we see, like, I guess, Spawn is watching over Terry. So we see Spawn as, like, a red silhouette. And we see, like, Terry's eyes are red and stuff. Uh, again, I, I'm just, I'm not really a fan of the uses of the red here. It feels more like a, a cashing in on a gimmick than actually using it to convey what you want to convey if that makes any sense like i said like steak did a really good job of embracing the black and white with minimalist coloring this if if it just it feels like they're trying to cash in on the fat they're like oh everyone else is doing it so we're gonna do it too and it just doesn't work for me but yeah terry eventually sees uh spawn on his throne or uh spawns like i guess he's temporarily on the throne i, I don't know what's going on because uh apparently he he He's on the throne for a while and the throne's calling to him, but then later on he's not on the throne and he's still not the king, but he, the, everyone else wants him to be the, the king sitting on the god throne. But yeah, Terry tells Spawn to leave Wanda be, like don't try to bring her back. Uh, if you do, I'll, you know, if you try to bring her back, I'm going to have to stop you. And Spawn um, basically tells her like, good, like you'll, you'll know what you need to do. Like either... All my enemies who had a connection to Wanda's death will pay, or I'll need to claim the throne myself. And it, if it comes to that, if it comes to me needing the, to claim the throne, I need you to destroy me. And I'm thinking, really, Terry? Like, you're Spawn. You're overpowered as hell. Like, you're one of the most overpowered characters in comic book history. You literally have the power to take out gods and and devils and demons and, and like, everything thrown at you. And you think some dude with a gun is going to be able to take you down? I don't know. I'm just not really buying into that. But yeah, there, there, there's more. But I, I don't. The story itself is whatever. I don't. I don't know. I'm just. I, I wish that each of the individual spawn little spawn verse stuff were were its own thing. Like I, I wish they had uh, Gunslinger spawn, and it was just Gunslinger spawn story, rather than Gunslinger spawn being the main focus. But his connection to everything else going on i wish it was just like his own separate thing you can have like references to what's going on in the other runs but just have gunslinger spawn be his own thing he's trying to get back uh home to his time period and meet back with his lover and stuff like that and this is like him being you know uh a fish out of water 
literally in the sense that you know he's from the 1800s and now here he is well he's from the 1880s and now here he is in our modern day time and he's trying to find a way to get back to the past while being lost in this future have a uh, jessica priest series you know she spawned and it's just her thing have the scorch be like a team up of their adventures but don't have like every little mini series or every little series be connected to the main run because then it just makes it confusing for anyone who hasn't read all the other issues because now now you got to read everything you have to read king spawn you have to read the scorched you have to read gunslinger spawn you have to read regular spawn um any other spawns that come out you have to read it otherwise you're going to be lost so i think that that was kind of a, a terrible decision. I kind of wish it was its own thing. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a fan of that. It makes it kind of hard to maneuver between what's actually going on. Like it would be nice if I, if I just read King Spawn, then I'd be completely okay. Like I don't like the fact that you're forcing me to read other stuff. And yeah, I just, I didn't care for the, uh, the black, white, and red gimmick here. Like again, the artwork is great. I think it would have looked a lot better if it was fully colorized every other issue has been i feel like you're trying to cash in on this whole uh, black and white with minimalist coloring gimmick that seems to to be happening a lot and it just doesn't work here it, it, it works when it's this own separate series like i said everyone else that did it um batman uh wonder woman red sonia uh superman they were all anthology series they were not like main runs. They were not canon. They were just here's some anthology series using different you know art styles and telling their own different stories. Of, and each story is its own separate Red Sonia, um, and it you know or, or its own separate Superman or Wonder Woman or whatever. And it works in in that regard. Here it just it doesn't. It feels like you're you're just not really embracing what the minimalist coloring can do for your story in terms of emphasizing certain aspects, emphasizing certain moods and stuff like that. Um, like I said, if you if you wanna know a good series that does that, check out Steak or check out my Steak reviews. This, it just, it didn't do it. So yeah, th this was kind of a, a bummer issue for me, but there you go. There, There's King Spawn issue number 10. Maybe you completely disagree with me and that that's fine. If you like the the comic, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you, you enjoyed it. It just, for me, this issue didn't do it. I will obviously be sticking with this series because I, I think this was just like a little one-off thing that they did with, in terms of uh, the, the coloring. But um, yeah, I am reading all the other spawn stuff, minus the main run. But I guess I'm going to have to get into that because the more I'm reading of everything else when it comes to spawn, the more I'm starting to get a bit confused on what exactly is going on. And it's because I feel like a lot's happening in the regular spawn run and I'm not reading that. So uh, there are parts that are, are getting lost on me. But uh yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you got any recommendations for comics, manga, stuff like that, let me know. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. So what'd you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell for a notification, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.